Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? It's only a short one this morning. I wanted to talk about the concept of event horizons and uh, how they affect you or don't affect you. So, and you can use driving as a fairly simple analogy to event horizons. So for example, I can't see anything, any cars coming the other way. So because I can't see any cars coming the other way, it doesn't matter what path I take to the point that I can see at that, at that time, because uh, there's nothing there to affect me. There were some cars there, as you could see, but they were over the horizon. And I don't mean over the physical horizon, I mean over the horizon defined by what I can see. Now, angry, you say, you might not have been able to see them because it was a blind hill or it was a blind bend or something, but you could have still crashed into them. And that is very true. And you've obviously read Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time, and I won't argue with you. Your event horizon is, is not necessarily what you can see. It's the furthest out that anything can exist which might affect you. So in that case, that would include a car that I couldn't see around the corner. So. But the point is, you only need to consider things which are out as far as your event horizon. Now, I know all about chaos theory and I know the butterfly effect. And you can say that a, you know, a gecko sticking his tongue out in Gambia could change the weather and cause a dry day or a wet day next week in the UK. So, Leaving aside chaos theory, I'm just talking about deterministic. Yeah, I hate these bloody lights. They just default to red. And so they should stay green one way, not be red both ways until a car comes along. Anyway, I'm not talking about quantum theory. I'm talking about Newtonian physics here. So, as you see, the road ahead is very is clear. So, anything I do on this bit of road, it can't be affected by anything, because nothing could get to me in any reasonable time frame to affect what I might do on that bit of road back there. Now, I'm sorry if this is all a bit confusing to you, but hopefully it will stop you worrying a bit because it does uh, eliminate the vast majority of things uh, that uh, can't possibly affect you. And it does encourage you to include uh, a number of things which may be um, within your event horizon which could affect you. So, for example, if you're working on the NHS, then obviously the NHS regulations affect you. Um, who's in charge of making those regulations affect you? They're all on your event horizon because they could do something which could uh, impact upon you. But being in the private sector, it's true to say that uh, I'm impacted far less directly by it. NHS regulations only uh, indirectly in so far as um, when it all goes tits up on the NHS we're left with dealing with the uh, with the fallout so there you go event horizons as I say if you're if you're interested in uh, that sort of theory then have a have a read of Stephen Hawking's brief history of time it is not a difficult one, contrary to what everyone says. Anyone listening to this podcast will have no trouble at all reading it. And I do recommend it because it's a sort of a... Uh, in the same way as uh, Einstein 
worked in the Swiss patent office and developed a knack for imagining how things are going to work because obviously if someone puts in a pattern and it's got the plans and uh, I mean they they've they probably built a prototype and so they uh, they know how these they, they've seen this thing but the clerk in the patent office hasn't seen that all he sees is the plans so he has to sort of visualize the uh, the thing And Einstein got so good at visualising things that he uh, ended up visualising stuff that nobody had ever visualised before in terms of space-time. But um, uh, Hawking, who was, a, who was obviously our brilliant guy and uh, you know very closely involved with the uh, discovery of black holes and also uh, black hole radiation, which they've now proved that uh, black holes do radiate energy um, very, because uh, in the universe, in space particles are constantly popping into existence and popping out of existence uh, all the time um, this is uh, the, the quantum level and what happens is that there are two particles might pop into existence a particle and an antiparticle, a matter and antimatter, and one of them will get sucked into the black hole and the other one won't. And so the uh, black hole's in the position then of looking as though it's radiating something. Because you see the, you see the particle and you don't see the antiparticle. So it looks like the black hole's radiating particles. Uh, and that, what that does is, and uh, in terms of uh, information, which is how we really measure uh, mass now, is that the is that the black holes evaporate. So instead of wondering what happens to black holes, and they suck in more and more material and get bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually they uh, nobody knows what they suck in everything and the whole the whole uh, universe disappears up its own black hole or they uh, eventually uh, due to this Hawking radiation that they eventually go away give back to the universe everything they've sucked out so that was just uh, although he conjectured that 50 years ago that's only just now been sort of pretty reliably demonstrated but his book uh, the brief history of time. He's not, he does not go into things to that degree. It. Uh, the reason I think he got such a bad rap was that, uh, you know, you think how stupid the average person is, and then you have to understand that half the population are even more stupid than that. Um, and so, of course, of course, people bought it and then. Or got given it as a Christmas present, and then I never read it because it does involve uh, conceptualising in the same way as Einstein did a ton of a ton of I think rather fun things, such as uh, how well, how would a two-dimensional individual see a three-dimensional world? Um, you know, which you might think is stupid. How can you have a a two-dimensional individual. I mean, it would have to. It couldn't have a gut system, as Hawking said, because if it had anything that went right the way through it, it would split it in half, and it would become two things. So uh, it'd have to have some sort of stoma where it ingested stuff and and spat it out again. But although you know these little uh, trivial things uh, are funny little mind games um, you know it's highly likely that we are a, a three dimensional organism living in the fourth dimension time in an in 11 dimensional universe you know I mean that's the best theory so far that there are 11 dimensions 
and when you ask where are the other dimensions, the answer is that they have curled up uh, really, really small, so we can't see them. Anyway, we have an intellectual one today. Started on time horizons, finished up in the 11th dimension. But uh, it's all relevant to dentistry. It is all relevant to dentistry. If you want to know how to run a business and, and concentrate really on what matters, then uh, think about uh, time horizons. All right, event horizons. All sorts of horizons. Anything that's uh, over your horizon, in other words, that it can't really affect you because it's too remote, that it hasn't got a chance to affect you because by the time it, the effect reaches you, you'll be somewhere else, then don't worry. Okay, have a good day. Bye.